Just a gentle reminder that all of the remaining fights here tonight at XFC 63, you can bet on those with Palmer Bet. If you're on the website, just find the UFC tab, hit that drop down, and you'll find XFC 63. Are you ready for your next fights? <laughs> Introducing first, Declan, the Terminator, Corcoran. And now we have, and now we have Declan, the Terminator, Kokorin, making his walk out to the cage for his fifth time fighting out of Black Dragon Kai and Fight Club Jiu-Jitsu. We've seen him in here before. Ridiculously slick, absolute slick quality Jiu-Jitsu. But he's got an ability to use his range and just high quality outside strikes, just picking off his opponent until he's finished playing with his food. Yeah, Declan Kokorin is really special. I, I say it all the time, he's kind of like a miniature Matt Bale, you know, there's just like, not only the fact that he looks like him, but he's got solid striking, solid ground game, like I said, he, he's the perfect amateur replica of, uh, of Matt Bale. And again, you got that backing of the Geordie Lovers McBain Black Dragon Kai team. But across the board, in terms of experience, I mentioned before, he's purple belt in jiu-jitsu, but he's also a Queensland state title holder for boxing. And he's improvement, he's been working on his kickboxing because, you know, it's not enough to wrestle people to the ground and submit them or just light them up with your hands. You've also got to work on your feet, so why not? <laughs> he's having a good time in here. And his opponents, Jarvis Kintaro Wickham. And Jarvis Wickham making his fourth walk out to the cage, fighting at base training center. Once again, highly represented here tonight in terms of base. And you'll hear the crowd go crazy as well. We also have another purple belt. So we have the beauty of seeing two purple belts throw down in the cage today. He's got seven years of BJJ. He wants to become a more complete MMA fighter, not just a grappler. And he said it's the best he's ever felt leading up into a fight. So we've got two young lads ready to throw down in the cage here. Yeah, one thing that excites me about Jarvis Wickham is, well, he's a personal trainer. You know, so when he's not fighting, he's not having to hammer a, you know, a, a tool belt around or, you know, work at an accountancy firm, you know what I mean? Like, the, the guy basically trains full time. I was also talking with, uh, earlier with uh, Trevor Sinclair. And Trevor's like, mate, one of the things you're going to see, they've been doing a lot of work on his striking, and uh, we're not expecting Wickham here to have his head on the center line at any time. So one of the things that we're working on is getting his head off the center line every time he strikes. So I'm looking to see how he brings that into his fight game today for his fourth walk in. So you look at a corner, Trevor Sinclair, Timmy Schultz, and Damian Brown. Awesome to see up against the Fight Club boys and Black Dragon Kai. This next fight is a featherweight fight. B-class rules, three by three minute rounds. Introducing first, in the blue corner. Weighing in at 65.9 kilos. With an amateur record of two wins, two losses, fighting out of Black Dragon Kai and Fight Club Jiu-Jitsu. Declan the Terminator Corcoran. These boys have not taken their eyes off each other. Nope. And as soon as I say that, Declan turns around. <laughs> <laughs> and his opponent in the red corner. Weighing in at 66.2 kilos. With an amateur record of one win, two losses. Fighting out of base. Training center. <laughs> Jarvis Kitaro Wickham. 
And your referee for this fight is Peter Hickmott. Here we go. Should be an explosive fight. Boys are just downloading. I love the feints oh, that. Go. I love the level change um, feints before Wickham jumps straight into it. Big overhand there by Jarvis. Kokoran's not having any of it. He's doing a great job in terms of keeping the arms up and keeping the distance out. So anytime you go for a wrestle, you're not actually fighting the hands, getting a connection with the human. You're actually trying to get your hips as close as possible to try and close that gap. And you see Kokoran did a really good job in terms of locking that out. So yeah, Peter Hickmont wasn't sure if there was a low blow there, but uh, both yeah. fighters ready to go out of the game. It might have been, might have been, but again, Kokoran just didn't want to lose that position, so fight through it. Oh, oh huge shot. Beautiful right. right. And that's that striking he's been working on. That was beautiful. And you see the level changes and the head movement as well. So Kokoran ate that. But how nice was that knee that he just threw when Jarvis came a little bit closer? Hey, wow. Some real strength there, wasn't it? Right. Hips forward, scrolling, passing. So see these purple belts work. I'd actually say side control is a really hard one in terms of um, having any kind of movement here. But right now, Declan has locked up that neck as well. And he's got a dash choke. Oh, he's scattering. Beautiful, oh, he's moved out. Beautiful yeah. reversal. Good reversal. Up to their feet. And the reason he was able to do that is Declan didn't lock up the legs in terms of securing the lower body. He had the upper body locked in play. And Wickham just made him work for it. Did a beautiful reversal and come up on top. Wickham is really invested in getting that to the ground. But Kakoran uh, has just got great sprawling there. Pulled him into a close guard now. And Wickham almost threw up a triangle there. Kokoran was able to get his left hand up on the right calf muscle to stop it. Kokoran's pushing his head up into the gutter here. And what that does is isolates the hips being able to move around. So he's doing a good job here locking it in place. And Wickham has that left overhook on the right arm of Kokoran. He's just moved now to try and slide his leg in there for a butterfly grip. What are you seeing here, Adam? What are you like, liking here that Kokoran's doing? Uh, Kokoran, man, he's doing a really good job trying to make space, as you said, with that butterfly hook. But the pressure against the cage is, I think, is absolutely fantastic here. It's hard to make space. It's hard to do anything when you're getting pressed up against the cage like that. I love this. The boys help each other up. Yeah, good stuff. That's purple belt respect. White belt would have left him on the ground. <laughs> But use that extra energy to get yourself up. And again, the crowd gets involved. Here we see that transition there. So we have the Dars locked in play. And as he turns over, Jarvis Wickham is able to spin out. Yeah, great defense there. At this stage, I think in the first round, Kokoran had a really good um, showing in terms of the striking. Obviously, without discrediting Wickham's beautiful left straight down the line as well. But some of the grappling pieces, Wickham has been utilizing, trying to close the gap and uh, take it to the ground. And Kokoran has really been sprawling out quite well. We'll see what kind of adjustments they've brought into the second round here and see who controls this round. Kokoran is oh, such wow. a tall, tall fighter as well. Beautiful long reach and he utilizes it. Black little explosions, nothing, nothing, nothing. Bang! Everything at once. You notice Wickham, Wickham leans over quite a lot when he's getting ready to strike. And it's that wrestler's base. He's almost got the back. Oh, he just wow. fell off. Fell off the back. Yeah, Kokoran is... Beautiful Good. scramble there. Fantastic wrestling. Beautifully, doesn't he? Yep. 
And Kokorin had a quick look up over to his corner, a quick nod. Jordy yelled something out to him, a quick nod in recognition. But these scrambles are absolutely phenomenal. So Damian Brown just yelled out Jarvis inside position. So Wickham is trying to do that. Good control this, here by Kokorin. It, it certainly is, but one of the reasons why Kokorin's not able to oh, strike there we go. a lot. Oh, that bent in a little, uh, a little tough spot there. That had to have tweaked his elbow. Got for a straight arm again. Oh, yeah. The figure Americana. four. He got out. He almost oh. had an Americana there. Oh, sneaky a little arm toggle from the top. Yep. Yeah. But as a result, he's been mounted. So while he was focused, while Wickham was focusing on the top. Oh, close to the back of the head there, but Pete calls it out straight away. Nice reversal there by oh, Ripley. Nice. Watch for Kukorin. He's got very active legs and quite long limbs, so he might yeah. be looking to throw up a triangle here as but well. He does yeah. have control of his, of his wrist here, so he needs to be careful he doesn't stuff it. And then, yeah, like you said, go for that triangle. And w Wickham is keeping Kukorin honest here as well, so Wickham's currently in top position. And it has beautiful head placement. Got to really push this out around having that chin, like uh, your forehead on the chin makes a huge effort. So right now, Kokorin's getting a high guard. Look for him to see something with his legs. And I like how Wickham is just stuffing the angle here. Really making Kokorin work. Good posture control here by uh, Kukorin. Ten seconds left in the round. I think it will try and hold on and not let uh, Wickham up. The boys are doing a great job here. Good so respect for the lads here. Third and final coming up. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think Wickham thought that might have been the, uh, the end of the fight. Yeah, uh, when Peter Hickman said, hey, mate, that's your round, he goes, okay, you've got another. <laughs> Wickham looking at up. <laughs> now, I, what I liked at the end there is that Wickham actually trapped Kokorin's arm, his right arm under his leg. So kind of had a pseudo crucifix or at least uh, locked up a limb. Um, probably wish he had a may maybe another minute there to just rain down some punches. We see that in the replay. Just over here, we've got Wickham. He's basically putting his weight over the hips. So he, his, his uh, nose over his opponent's nose. And what that does is takes out the hips' ability to be able to throw up any submissions. So you kind of safe to ground and pound there. Sinclair's in Wickham's head. You need to move your head, mate. You need to move your head. Another one of those fights again, you know, like stuff being a judge right now. Stuff having to uh, put pen to paper and decide a winner in this fight. Watching this fight, anyone at home, anyone in the in the uh, crowd right now, the crowd is the winner here. Oh, oh that's up there. Nice. Another yeah. one. Corner's yelling out, knee, knee. Oh, oh beautiful, beautiful takedown. Take down. And that was pure grit and determination that did that. And Curran has to get up here. He has to move from this position. Beautiful knee slice. There, there we go. Wickham Beautiful well. stand up. He's just got to complete it. That is gets... huge from Kokorin. Wow. So Big Wickham time. and knee slice just as Kokorin stood up then too. So put himself in a really good position by standing up. Kokorin's trying to use the cage to peel Wickham off. Wickham's got his hands up together. Boom. Another, another ride. Down he goes again. I tell you what, I love this from both boys. Jarvis Wickham knows he needs the takedowns to win the fight. And Declan Kokorin knows he needs to stand up to win the fight. There's nothing worse than seeing both fighters ride the timeout yep. and flip a coin with the judges. Both of these boys want to win this fight. Inch by inch yeah. they're competing to get and that. What you see there is that uh, Kokorin was trying to put that uh, guillotine on. Looks close. I think that Wickham is actually neck. safe just in terms of being able to jump oh, across the good. side. That's How perfect. smart was that? That's, that's intelligent jiu-jitsu right there. It certainly was. And uh, it was great to see like Kokorin with the... 
<laughs> threatened the neck and fed his other hand through. But while he was doing that, Wickham was moving the legs. So he knew it was coming, was able to get around. This is huge mat control time. It certainly is, but we need to see some right damage as well. So this is a point around locking up control, but also being able to put it up. Here's the knee on belly. And he's utilized the cage to try and pop out, but in doing so, he's removed one of his escape points. A minute to go. This is huge from Jarvis Wickham right now. Jarvis will be looking to try and posture up and rain down some ground control here. Kukorin. Just causing some kind of damage. Kokorin stopping a lot of it by uh, locking that uh, right arm with an overhook. He's looking for the judge to try and help him here, but yeah, at this that, stage... He's got that head pressure. Peter Hickmont saying, hey, you've got to do something here. Here we go. Here's some of the ground, ground and pound we're looking for at home. Kokorin is doing a good job just trying to lock that arm up and stopping him from being able to cause any damage. While Jarvis is trying to get him to mount, he's trying to sneak that leg through. He's almost got it there. There's a quarter mount there that Kokorin's got. There's 10 seconds left for Carnage here. Huge third round for Jarvis Wickham. He certainly is getting some striking going. He's got his double hooks in place. What a fight, boys. Wow, fantastic. So close. Are you not entertained? The boys putting everything in there at the end. I like the showmanship there of Kokorin raising his hand, trying to get that last bit of uh, intensity through for the judges. This Incredible. one's going to go down to the wire. The judges have to earn their money tonight. Here we see the replay. They're quite a good technical ground game too. As we have David Nash going across to the judges, getting the final score. And to make it official, we throw to Peter Hickmont. This fight has gone to the judges. It is a unanimous decision. 29-28, 29-28, 29-28. To the blue corner! Your winner! Declan, the Terminator, Corcoran! Right, I'm here with your winner, Declan, in a second. Got to get the money shot. <laughs> All right. Declan, I tell you what, mate, what a close fight. I had no idea how the fight was going to go. I was expecting to look over and see the, uh, the judges with a coin. How nervous were you with the way that that third round went, and were you confident that you got the decision? I was pretty nervous. The way I see it is damage wins fights. He was on top, he was holding me. But the way I see it, that's restraining someone, not beating someone. Of all the footage that you've been able to watch of Jarvis, was there anything that he did tonight that surprised you? His top pressure was strong. I knew he was coming in being a good grappler, but his top pressure was strong. The question I've got is, where to from here? Do you sit down with your coaches and talk about opponents that you want to fight? Because there's a uh, bit of an XFC celebrity getting around here somewhere. Dominic Simon, the Pink Panther, he's actually just stepped up and walked away. Commentator's curse. Thanks, Dominic. Is that the sort of bloke that you want to fight, or do you just leave it all down to uh, Geordie Lovers McBain to fight? I'm going to go back to the gym and beg my coaches for that fight. I'd love to fight him. And what's it like with a coach like Geordie Lovers McBain, who has never once said no to an opponent that's been put in front of his fighters? Never. He, I fought two weeks ago in Muay Thai against the win up and weight. I'm always ready to fight. I'm always fit. It's all thanks to my team. 
So, mate, what's the goal? XFC champion, pro, pro debut, UFC, what's the goal? One step at a time, but I'd like to be an XFC champ. Uh, mate, last question. Obviously, you had a huge fan base here. Who would you like to thank? Uh, I'd love to thank um, Jordy Labor's Big Bang, Gavin Hain, Daniel White, Harley Osgood, my whole team. Everyone gives me the effort, so thank you very much, boys. All right, I see Jordy Labor's Big Bang making his way out of the cage. I'll, uh, I'll let him go this time. Congratulations, Declan Corrokin.